The UK government says that sanctioning people within the welfare benefits system will help them into paid work. We found that sanctions not only fail to help people into work, but actually create barriers that stop them. Here's how. People try hard to meet their Job Centre Plus conditions to avoid being sanctioned. But too much effort is wasted on futile online job searches. Keeping to the rules can actually get in the way of finding work. Another problem is that when people have had their money stopped, they can't afford the fare to go for interviews, or buy clothes, or even keep their phone topped up. So they're at a big disadvantage in the jobs market. Many people who had been sanctioned told us existing health conditions, especially mental health, worsened. They suffered severe stress, depression and despair, and some couldn't afford to eat properly. So again, they were hampered in finding work. Some people were pushed away from the welfare system altogether. Here's what happened to Harry. I'm homeless, living on the street. They put me on job seekers. Then that all went wrong and I got sanctioned and then I got made homeless. I couldn't pay the rent because I was sanctioned. So then my rent ended up backing up and because my head was all over the place, I just couldn't deal with it. Sanctions only hurt, there's no good in them. Two years later, having lost another tenancy because of a further benefit sanction, Harry was back rough sleeping. Just can't be asked with the stress for 70 quid a week. It's just not worth it. Every time you go in, you're on hooks. Like, right, what's going to happen now? I don't claim benefit at the moment. Just don't want to know. Too much of an headache. You know, you never know from one week to the next whether you're going to get paid, and it's just proper stress. The only thing it's done is make it more difficult, basically. A few people told us they had turned to survival crime, shoplifting, burglary, stealing, when their money was stopped. This is Peter. He incurred a benefit sanction for failing to attend a work programme appointment. He felt depressed and indicated that he might use drugs again, despite being clean for three years. put myself out there to get work and I'm getting punished for it. I've been to the family and family can only help you so much. Everyone's on the breadline. I was going to walk around to a friend of mine who's a criminal and borrow some money. But then where does that put me? It puts me in their pocket. At our final interview, Peter admitted he had briefly resumed criminal activities to cope with the loss of benefits. I had to go and do things I didn't want to do. Basically 13 weeks with no money and food vouchers. It's commercial burglaries, basically. Peter's experience brings us to what does help people end problematic behaviours and improve the quality of their lives. With support, Peter stayed off drugs and completed courses at a homelessness charity. When it comes to finding paid work, our research found that appropriate, personalised support was pivotal. Here's Joy's story. Joy entered the UK as an asylum seeker and after being granted refugee status, quickly found employment, before being made redundant and claiming JSA. Job Centre Plus sent her on several courses, including English language, despite her migrating from an English-speaking country. Compulsory. I didn't have a choice. I was like, I already know English. I come here every single Thursday and I think I've executed whatever you've required of me. So for you to doubt that I know English. I have to put the job centre first before anything else. Every single day I have to write out my activity history and say today I did this, this, this. Energy being directed to the wrong area rather than looking for a job and also getting a job. It is very difficult and I feel that they've put more pressure on us, well, personally on me, than help to get me a job. When we next interviewed Joy, she was happy and excited to be working. This was directly as a result of being referred to a work programme provider and, more importantly, a personal advisor. The advisor proactively worked with Joy to identify suitable posts to apply for. They have a larger database when it comes to employers. They help me with positions that I wasn't aware of. I was never under pressure like at the job centre. I passed my probation in three months, so I'm now full time and permanently employed. It's been going great. I felt listened to, I felt assisted. Definitely the support was much appreciated. It got me the job at the end of the day. At her final interview, she remained employed with the same company who described her as an ideal and committed employee. It is important to note that Joy's case is the exception. Across our studies, such positive examples are far from typical. That's why we are recommending that as a minimum, 
welfare conditionality needs to be rebalanced with more emphasis and resources focused on personalised employment support. The quality of the mandatory support and training needs to be significantly improved. And more generally, it is time for a comprehensive review of the continued use of welfare conditionality.